generally the content that I make here is specifically directed at men. But since my channel has grown, there's been a couple of women who have become subscribers and they have added some really good questions to, to the mix. They've asked some things that I don't think are really dealt with on any great depth. So I made a promise to one of those women, Miss Sandra, this video is the one that I promised you that I would make before the weekend. Let's get after this. Miss Sandra first contacted me about a video that I made about Andrew Tate and his influence on the people who follow him. And in that, in that discourse, she was talking about a statement that he made that many of us agree with that who older wants women to be king? spent their youth riding the carousel, having fun, being irresponsible and going from dude to dude, racking up the miles is less, is worth less than a, her younger counterpart that doesn't have the years, doesn't have the mileage, doesn't have the abuse physically, emotionally, and mentally that many of their elder counterparts have. These are facts. And regardless if you like them or not, it's simple truth. Most men, if they had their choice, they would choose the younger woman without all of the negative, negative experiences and the disgusting habits over one who has been run through by every guy that she knows. That's, that's pretty much common knowledge. And I think that even the women who partake, that, that partake in that type of activity, they have to know it on some level because so many of them lie about it. If you really, if you really believe in what you do, then you don't lie about it. You tell whoever you're dealing with, look, this is how I get down. And if they don't like it, then you just step because for women, if you move that way, there are a lot of guys that don't really mind. So there's always a level of shame to that activity, to that behavior. But the cognitive dissonance, it, it, it requires that they know that, but yet believe that it's okay. And Ms. Sandra did not present that case. She understands that the way that she's conducted her business in the past has led her down a bad path and she, she seems to really want to reconcile that with her life. But another thing that Tate says that a lot of us agree with is that these women who, who do these things have no recourse in life. Once, once you've decided to go down that path, you don't have any hope. No man is going to want you. And again, I, on a general basis, I have to say that I agree with that, but not in every case. Not in every case. I've seen too many instances where women that moved that way found someone who changed the way that they saw themselves. And I know there's a lot of people who say, oh, no, man, just give it time. There's a lot of losers that have to believe that things are always going to go bad. But I'm 52 years old, and I've seen, I've seen them go well too many times. And even on a personal level, I've, I've had women who were loyal and dedicated to me find themselves in that situation and the reason why I believe that is because there were bars there were bars on the windows even for me but my point here is people can change I've seen it happen and I think that it's really it has to do with one's perspective and it has to do with understanding who you're dealing with in Miss Sandra's case, and the reason why I felt like this was important to, to address on this channel, and hopefully the men on this channel have it tuned out because I think that this will give you a different insight on what brings most of us to this space, and that's the heartache, heartbreak, and the disappointment that we've had in relationships. Too many times we tell ourselves a story about the person that we're dealing with. She's beautiful, she's hot, you know, everything is cool at first, and you end up engaging with this person and the truth is the furthest thing from your knowledge base. And because of that, that's, that's your own fault. You, you invited a snake into your house because it put lipstick on and that's your fault. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. One of the things about my program, one of the things that I saw for myself and the reason why that I know that it works 
is because we, it's so easy to look on the outside, to look at the symptom of your much greater sickness and say, it's this, it's this and this. And if you consistently put band-aids on a mortal wound that is so deep seated in your soul, eventually you will bleed out, you will die and you will live a life of quiet desperation and be lost and angry in what so many men find themselves at. And so many women find themselves with prescription bottles all over their counter because the life that you're living is not the life that you're supposed to. And when you constantly blame those people out there and this, that, and the other, or you justify your actions, you're doomed to repeat the same shit over and over again, no matter what lies you tell, no matter what program you buy, no matter what you, no matter what you say, until you seriously figure out how and why you got to where you're at and go way deep and find out your why you do the things that you do, you're never gonna change. In Miss Sandra's case, she experienced something at a very young age. And I, and, and I think that this goes unspoken. She experienced something at a very young age at the hands of somebody in her, in her immediate family that's very close to her. And that event, that, that event did something to her that put her into a mental frame where she felt that that's all that she was worth. Now, you can look at that and say, oh, that's just some bullshit. But when a person's trying to change and they come to their truth, it's foolish to, to say that they're lying, especially when they say this truth through tears and obvious pain. A lot of times when these events happen to children, they tend to go one of two ways. For women, they either become for the streets or they become almost nun-like. They become almost prude, very, very, very chaste with what they do because it's almost a shame for them to engage in that sort of behavior. For boys, it's a little bit different. They either get extremely violent and aggressive because of the shame or they go the fruity way and end up dabbling in homosexuality and weird shit. I've seen this happen in my lifetime and I didn't know what I was seeing. In particular, the very thing that brought me to this space was when I was trying to peel my own onion back and figure out my why, why I was making the horrible decisions I was making, doing the things that I was doing hurting the people that I was hurting to try to make myself feel this this hole that was inside of me. I decided to make a podcast. And in this podcast, basically, I just spoke to myself. I was just talking randomly as if I had an audience and trying to get answers from the universe. At the same time, I was praying, and I put this podcast in a very obscure place, and one of my very good friends from high school found it. And after he heard that, and listened to me share with nobody in particular the things that I struggled with and had hidden so well behind the various masks that I had constructed. We had a conversation where he shared with me a very similar experience that Miss Sandra had, but with, at the hands of his own brother. And because of, the, because of the way things go, because of the way that children think, his threats kept him from exposing his brother and he grew up with this rage inside of him. All of his relationships have been shit. He's, he's a broken man even today because how do you, how do you justify that in, in your soul? How do you, how do you write that course when somebody who for all intents and purposes is supposed to look out for you has violated you, who's tampered with you in the most horrible way? One of the reasons why I think that every man would do well to dive into this program at whatever level he, could, he can bring himself to commit to is because all of us are trying to get over and through something that broke us a long time ago. I don't, I don't claim, I don't feel, and I don't think that I've got all this shit figured out, not one bit. But what I do know is I've made all the mistakes of pointing out what I've done everything that people do wrong, trying to find answers, trying to find relief, trying to find some sort of peace in this world. But the reality of it is, is everything that you need is already inside of you. And for Miss Sandra, I told her that I had a remedy, and this is very, very simple, Miss Sandra. 
you have identified why you have felt the way you have felt. You say to yourself that you have begun to repent, pray about it. You've sought out, you've sought out help. What you have to do is you're going to have to forgive the person who violated you. You're going to have to forgive yourself for all the things that you have said to yourself that have made you believe that you are less than because that happened to you. You have to go back and you have to have a conversation with that child. You have to put your arms around that child and you have to make that little girl that you have allowed to run and ruin your life feel safe. I've said in the past that you can change the past. And the way that you do that is you go back and you go and deal with those things that broke you. You go back and you heal those things that cut you, that you never dressed, that you never, that you never could fix. Now that you're an adult, now that you can see, go back, deal with those emotions, deal with those occurrences, deal with that broken child that's still deep inside of you, buried under layer after layer of mask and ego construct. And tell that little girl that it's okay. That she's okay now. And if and when you meet a man who is a, a godly man, who is a good man, who knows that we're all just humans trying to get through this shit, be honest with him. Explain to him where you've been, how you got there, and who you are today. If he is a godly man, if he prays, and if you're sincere, he will hear your heart not judge you on your past we all have things that we're ashamed of in this cancel culture world of narcissism and pointing the finger at everyone it's very easy to get caught up in this oh but you did this or you did that if somebody cleaned out your closet how many things could they chastise you for all of us are ashamed of things that we've done in the past that's what makes us grow. That's what make us groan. That's what make us men and women. I tell people all the time, do not engage in physical activity with someone that you truly want to be with. Get to know that person. Make adult decisions. Do things with a purpose, on purpose. And if nothing else, you get a better understanding from people. You'll understand that we're all just trying to get through this shit. Out.